Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of March 18th, 2019. I hope this podcast sounds good today, and it's a little hard to know whether it will. I'm using some alternative studio equipment while I'm upgrading a little bit of what's what I normally use, and so um, I have to say you're going to get what you get, and I, I hope that you can forgive me for that, and we'll be back at 100% full strength, hopefully, next week. Anyway, the podcast for this week is about VHF-only antennas. I've started to get a lot more requests in the last six to nine weeks for VHF-only antennas. Why? It has to do with this FCC repack. You see, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, the FCC finished a process by which they tried to buy back a number of licenses that really didn't do much for them, but they reassigned pretty much every channel. Uh, The goal was to try to eliminate channels 34 through 51. That, those frequencies are then going to get reassigned to 5G data, which is desperately needed because we all want faster and faster downloads from, on our phones. But there's only so many frequencies that are really good for that, and it turns out there's a big chunk of them that are already being used for television. Improvements in technology have made it possible to fit more channels in a smaller space. Why? Because it used to be necessary to have an empty channel between pretty much every single channel you were going to use. That's just not needed anymore with new digital modulators. So you can fit a lot more in that smaller space. However, it does mean that a lot of channels are moving what we call down spectrum. They're moving from maybe channel 42 on the broadcast band to channel 18 or even further down. Those channels from 2 to 13 we refer to as VHF. You may not have heard that term if you're not a a long-time antenna enthusiast, but channels 2 through 13 are a much lower frequency than channels 14 to 51. And a much lower frequency means you need a much bigger antenna. The original goal with the digital transition that ended in uh, 2009 was to try to get everybody up to UHF because then you could use a lot smaller antennas. But it didn't really work, partially because broadcasters who had really good and memorable frequencies like Channel 5 or Channel 7 didn't want to give them up. And also in larger cities, it was just necessary to use some of those VHF frequencies just to make sure that everything fit. Still the case, and by moving everything down spectrum, you're going to have more and more VHF channels being used. And so people are looking at their existing UHF-only antennas and saying, okay, how can I combine a VHF-only antenna in there? There are a couple of VHF-only options out there. Very few, however. Uh, The best one that I've seen is an add-on from Antennas Direct, which you can find on SolidSignal.com. Uh, I will pop up a link to that if you're watching this in the YouTube video. Uh, and if not, just search for Antennas Direct VHF uh, at SolidSignal.com and you will find it. It's an add-on that's designed to clamp on to Antennas Direct antennas, but the truth is it re- works pretty well with almost any antenna. You may need to use zip ties or something like that to attach it, but it's a VHF antenna and combiner that lets you add VHF capability to practically any antenna. Another option is to purchase a new antenna that has UHF and VHF, and if your current antenna is already beginning to look a little beat up because you put it up back in 2008, maybe it's time to do that. Maybe it's time to investigate because there are some newer antennas, like the Televis Dynova Boss. Again, I'm going to pop up a link. And the Televis Dynova Boss mix is really a new antenna that gives you ultimate flexibility, better VHF performance, and it works in a small package, which is perfect for homeowners associations, perfect for apartments, what have you. You can even use this antenna inside if you consider it a piece of modern art, I suppose. The most important thing is that you do not have to throw away the antenna that you have if you like it. You can add VHF capability, and more often than not, you're going to need to. If you don't know when your particular market is repacking and is changing, if you're not aware of that, chances are it hasn't happened yet. You're going to start to see a lot of scrolls on the bottom of TV channels telling you to rescan for channels. Believe me, this is something that you're not going to miss. There are a number of excellent resources over at the Solid Signal blog. Again, I'll pop that best one up. But 
more importantly, this is something that if you watch a lot of broadcast TV, you're not going to really miss, not at all, because it's, you're just going to see it every single day until it's time to do it. That being said, I would still rescan for channels about every 30 days or any time you find a channel that you normally watch has disappeared. The easiest thing to do is rescan for channels. I know I'm talking to antenna enthusiasts here, so you probably know how to do it. That's good because it's different on every television, and I can't give you a precise guide that's going to work for every TV, every streaming device, etc., etc. It usually starts by going into the menu options and finding a setup for over-the-air television. It could be called OTA, it could be called antenna setup, and then somewhere there's going to be something that says scan for channels. It generally takes about 5 to 10 minutes, and that's all that you need to do. And I would do it, oh, basically, you know, <laughs> every 30 days until you're sure that everything is gone. Anyway, that's about it for the podcast for this week. Next week, I hope that we'll be back in full strength uh, with our new and upgraded studio equipment. Until then, have a great week, and I will talk to you soon.